Welcome everyone. Just remember before we get started, if you want to download the project links, it will be down below in the description. Just all you got to do is enter your email and it's completely free. Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this video, we'll be going through some custom fonts uh, and custom themes. So in Godot and stuff. So the first thing I want to show you guys is how to get a font. So it's actually pretty easy. You can just quick Google search free font and you'll find a bunch of free fonts. There's ones from Google, ones from uh, these ones, you can even search up um, game font, right? And you'll get more gamey fonts. Right? So if we go over here, we can find some of these uh, cool fonts. You might even find some pixelated ones. Uh, I tend to like these ones, but do keep in mind that not all of them are generally free for personal use. Uh, so you do have to take a look at, you know, the ones that you're able to use, uh, those kind of things. So there's even, you know, Japanese, um, we have our sugar cream, whatever these are, right? So there's a lot of websites, you just download them. Uh, and yeah, so in our game, once you import these fonts that you find, whatever ones you want, uh, these are the ones I found. So Pixeloid Mono, you can probably find the same one if you look it up. Uh, just make sure that you have a .ttf file. Uh, there are other files that would probably work. Uh, I don't remember them all though, so I'm not gonna list them all in this video. Uh, you can just follow along and see if it works. If it doesn't, then you'll have to find the proper file for it. So, okay, let's create our theme. So let's create our theme, maybe outside of all these files. So we'll go to the resource file here and create new, create, um, I believe it's resource. And then if we search up theme, yeah, there we go. This is our default theme, uh, default theme. Okay, so in here, if we double click it, we now have this interface on the right hand side with a bunch of things. Now we only have these three, which is useful, but at the same time, not useful. So, okay, you might notice that we can now drop in our font, which is very cool, but you'll see that it doesn't change anything. So what we can do here is we go to project uh, settings and we can now go to search. Uh, I believe if we search up theme, yeah, here we go. We'll find a custom theme. We'll also find custom font. So this is different than this one in the sense that this will override anything in the engine, but this will override anything that uses the theme. So it's a little weird, but it kind of works differently. So we'll save and restart. And here we go. Now we see that our text is different. It uses the custom font. All right, that is our first default uh, theme thing. So you can even see here all the things that are inside of our game now are using that font. Now these are the default themes that we have. Now I want to edit these, right? I want to edit some of them. Let's say the button, the panel, etc. right? So we're going to start with the panel and the buttons. Okay. So to, to add a theme, we have to go to manage items and import an item. So, okay. The button is one of them, right? We also want to do panel. So let's find our panel here and import this as well. And progress bar, right? almost forgot. We want to get the progress bar as well. So this will be for HP. I'll show you guys how to do that later though. Um, so we'll do the theme for it and we'll implement the actual HP later, right? So, okay. It says uh, import tabs, whatever. We'll import them. And now we have these three options here, which is very cool. So, okay, let's do the button first. It might be the uh, most trickiest. So actually let's start with the panel highlight since this one might be a little easier. So we'll get the hang of it first and then go into the button. Okay, we want to go to the panel and select new style box texture because we have a texture image, right, that we want to fill in. So let's select this. And now you can see our uh, panel disappears, but don't worry, we're going to fix that soon. Now the texture, if we open this up, we'll find a texture tab that I can pop it in. And now you can see that this pops in. Now that's not what I want, obviously. So what I can do is go to the sub region, edit region, and we can now find a panel that I want. Now, some of these you might not have, like this one. I did customize um, some of these myself. So this one is a collection of, I believe this one on the top and this one on the bottom. So I just, you know, copy pasted it and brought in a full panel. Um, you can easily do this in your own pixel art editors. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, you can look it up on YouTube. Uh, so I'm not, probably not gonna be showing you in this series, uh, but I did use graphics scale if anyone's interested, it's a free, software. Uh, it's really easy to download and there's even a portable version for it. So, okay. Usually 
um, in Godot and in, in the subregions, you'll find that there's different snap modes. Now, this one won't work with uh, a lot of these. So grid snap is usually pretty nice because grid snap will allow you to snap it. Now, this one's not in the grid, so it, we're not going to use that. The auto slice is also pretty useful, but in this case, it doesn't work as well because the assets are not like uh, far away from each other, at least not far enough. So we're going to use none. And we're just going to do this ourselves. So we can just draw a triangle here and move these up into the square or into the rectangle as much as we can. And if we do this, you'll now see we have a panel. Now, this isn't really what we want. How do we make these borders a little smaller? Well, these dotted lines here, if I move it to the uh, side, we can actually make it so that it uh, essentially takes its original size on the outside. So now if you see we moved everything in the middle, we can even move it a little closer. Uh, in fact, I'm going to move it all the way to the top to avoid these yellow lines here. And then same thing over here. And now we are taking this part in the middle. So now you can see in our panel on the outside, it looks a little cleaner. Okay, so all right, that's our panel. Let's take a look at our buttons because our buttons, we have quite a bit. So if we head over to the styles for our button, we have quite a few. What we'll do is we'll go to the pressed first. So let's do the texture here. We'll drag this in. And let's go to the sub region, edit region. And if we zoom out, uh, we should have these three buttons. So we have pressed, hover, and normal. So we have these three, which is nice. So let's pop them in. Let's create this area here and try to make sure it fits inside of uh, the rectangle properly. So this one needs to go down a little bit. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to uh, waste your time, I suppose, doing this, you can always see the uh, rectangle regions on the right hand side on my screen. And you can probably just copy paste it at the end of the day. Um, and it would probably work properly. So here, I'm going to just change this like this. In fact, I might just do that. And now we have our button like this. So this will take the middle part. And I want this guy to be outside of it. So now our button looks like that on the press button. So it looks a little weird, but that's what we're going to have. Um, although, let me just check. Okay, I see what I did in my reference. Let me just change it actually. So what I did is I ended up having it like this and this, and then I ended up changing this into the middle like that, apparently. Okay, no, that's not perfect. Okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna pop in the numbers. Um, this will be 83. All right, so now I'm popping in the numbers that I'm using from my reference. Uh, so that way I can get a little perfect. Okay, looks a little odd. Okay, I think we're gonna actually change it back to what it was because that is really weird. Okay, so let's pop this in right there and like that. And that is good. Okay, let's keep, leave it like that. All right, now let's do the normal. So what I can do is I can just pop this in and drag it into the normal and have it just take over. Same thing for the hover. However, I'm going to click into each of these and make them unique. And now I'm going to go to the normal, go to the sub region, edit, zoom out, go to the normal, and just drag this guy over here and try to get the entire square, or the entire uh, button, I suppose, in that rectangle. Now we can hit close. And now this is our normal button. and yeah, that's our normal. So let's go to the hover. Let's uh, make this unique as well, which I think I already did, but let's double check. And lastly, we have the hover button. So let's change or select this one as well. All right, that looks good. So now you can see here, we can test it and it works pretty nicely. In fact, it even changed the button over here. So now if I hit play, we can even see that the things over here have changed. Now, don't worry about these uh, 
what are these called? These blue things. Um, those are the collision shapes. If we turn it off in the debug, it'll disappear, right? So let's hit play. And now we can see my game. Uh, if I die, my pot thing pops up and I have custom fonts, custom uh, button. I can even click and all that stuff. Now, if you're wondering about that like gray line, uh, that's because of the focus. Now for that, we could uh, put the pressed for the focus or the normal. I actually usually do the normal. Uh, and then for the disabled, we can actually just make this a empty. So this means nothing is there. Uh, we never really disable any buttons in our game, so we won't really have to worry about that. All right, last up is the progress bar. This one will be hopefully a little easier. So for this one, uh, same thing, we're gonna get the texture, pop it in here, pop in the texture box. We'll go to sub region. Now this one, I also edited one. So I'm gonna be using this one and this uh, red one for the HP, right? So now do keep in mind that uh, I did separate some of these, right? So I moved some away because the sub region would not work properly. So, okay, the background here, we want to select this as the background. Now, the problem with the progress bar and this progress bar specifically is that it's a little weird. So what we're actually gonna do is not select anything for the background, because if we do, it ends up being really a little odd. So what we're actually gonna do for the background is make it empty. And then for the fill, that's what we're gonna use uh, for the actual fill. So we're gonna go to, oh, gonna go to the texture and then pop in our texture. Go to subregion and then select our red, like so. And then we can move up, our, uh, move this down here, and move the dotted line over here, and this one like that. And now we have a red fill. Now, what we'll do for the background or the actual texture for the background is we'll use subregion, but for sprite. So you'll see what I mean when we actually get started with the GUI, uh, which will actually be in the next video. So I will see you all in the next video where we'll start implementing the GUI for our player, some uh, you know inventory stuff. We'll get started with our inventory, our profile, uh, stuff like that, which will be pretty fun. So I hope to see you guys all in the next video.